Hey, what's guys? What's going on? It's your boy Brandon Burke. Um, uh, what's up, man? How you guys doing today on a Tuesday? Um, like I said, it's nice today. Um, let's, let's go on and jump into it, man. Um, actually, I was just looking through, um, and I know a lot of people was talking about, um, a lot of things. I know that I know they were talking about the viral, um, a video of viral. This went viral um, yesterday about a about a female Air Force uh, sergeant. I think her name is uh, is Geraldine Lovely. Um, she maybe look she look maybe uh, Hispanic maybe. Uh, I can't really recall. I can't really see if she's a really white girl. She she look a little bit uh, racially mixed or enhanced. So, so um don't know where her background is. But yeah, I know they said she made a um, a rant, a racial rant about black women. Talk about she don't give they don't give no respect to her, and, and she demand respect, and she feels disrespect in some type of way, I think, you know, because she's being in an authoritarian position, um, I mean, my, my take is that, I think, is a woman who really just want to be in a superior stance, um, uh, almost of, of, of a, of a master and slave relationship, and that's, it, and that, I'm gonna call it what it is, um, when you have people that's your boss and whatever like that, sometimes they take the authoritarian, the authoritarian and they take that view of almost like a slave master relation. And that's a that's a very old, old um relations that a lot of people that was put in positions of power always view somebody that's that's under them. Um also man, they, they, I wanna talk a little bit about that uh Man, I don't know what that girl. She looked like she looked like uh, Selena Gomez about the the DACA and the, um, the immigrants built this country. I'm 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 only gonna put a little bit of my two cents on that. Um, nobody really didn't build nothing. I mean, really, the only group that actually built something was um, enslaved African and indigenous people. I, you know, the quote, the word is, is enslaved. That's free labor. That's what built this country. Um, and free labor is, was always a main thing in America. Not just America, but the entire Western Hemisphere. Um, so my my take, my take in that you know, a lot of immigrants are like, uh, uh, you know, because she's Hispanic. I know a lot of people are Hispanic and Latino. They look at DACA just as, as a solely their agenda. Well, I'd like to break the news to you, but DACA, it's many, many, many races under DACA. Many groups of people, racially. So, it's not just a Hispanic thing. Even though they like to turn and flip it into their thing, but it's not totally their thing, um, but I think my, 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 I think my gist of it is, immigrants haven't really bought nothing, uh, really ain't built nothing, how you gonna build something that's already been built, it's already been established, you know what I'm saying, so, you, you can't, and you forgot the word Hispanic and Latino, that, that was non-existent, they, they went, before they even became a national, before they really became a nationalized term, Mexican was just dubbed as uh, as white. Every Hispanic was dubbed as white. If if, if 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 you wasn't really white, then you was deemed black or a slave. If you was deemed indigenous, then you was deemed indigenous and native. So there was no such thing as those terms. Those terms came in. In a political agenda that that served in white supremacy, so that that claim she did about immigrants building the country—that's a farce. That's a farce in itself. Um, 
you can't, I mean, to, to really use that term, I mean, you really, to, to you, if you want to use that term, you have to include enslaved African indigenous people. You have to include those two groups. In that type of manner, you have to include them. If you don't include them, then what you're saying is, is, is just a complete false. It's a false, it's unfictional, and it, it pretty much that's what it is. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of like done talking with that. I'm actually going to jump into, uh, into Ethiopia. I know they, they're, they're going to build a refinery. It's 120 gallons of, uh, 20 barrels of oil a day. Um, it's somewhere, I think they were, it was, it was supposed to be, um, built by Black, Blackstone, but they, but they end up wanting to shelf it, but. You have a lot of investors from uh, a lot of Asian countries um, that want to partake in this. So I think the you know they're going to go and roll it out. And you know the new I think that that's a big thing for Ethiopia because a new ref oil refinery is going to boost their economy. Their their economy is still growing. It's going like it's like ten percent. And it's growing like eight something, eight percent per year. So I mean, their economy is really, really growing. Um, but also too, man, shout out to them for they're becoming more self-aware and they're becoming a little bit more self-dependent, uh, especially from the Western, Western world. But also too, I want them to be very, very aware of also what Asians' intentions in Africa is. Yes, their main attention is by energy, because they know Africa have a source of an abundance of energy. But also in the world, too, you want to make sure they don't become like the Western power and take advantage of you. And they now controlling your economy and, and so far and so far. So you have to watch, you got to watch and you have to keep your wealth close to your hand. That's pretty much my um, advice to Ethiopia and any African nations that's having an emerging economy and a self-reliance and a self-awareness and almost like a new self-identity and independence. So you also have to have that type of awareness as well that white supremacy is very, very far and wide and white supremacy also have allies um, that as well. So Open your eyes and hopefully you don't be used again. Um, but yeah, I know they, they, they actually was in Nigeria. Um, and there was also in Benin and there was also in Togo. But um, and some parts of Ghana as well. But they were probably coping with the, with the role of, an, uh, in, with the role in the slave trade. I think there was no really thing to it. I mean, you had no choice but to cope with it. Um, during the now during the 1800s, and maybe even during the mid the mid and late 1700s, you was you was already kind of occupied. You know what I'm saying? So there were certain parts of Africa that wasn't occupied, and there was a lot of parts of Africa that actually gave in somewhat retrospect gave control to the European power um, the control of their land. Some fought alongside the British and France and so far and so far against other tribes or other groups of Africans that caused the domination of European and Africa during those times. So yes, you're gonna cope you're gonna cope with that. And there's no second and going hand around it. But the thing about it to me is, you must you must look at you look at the past, learn from your past, and apply from what you learn in the past to the present, so you can prevent in the future. Um, but yeah, that's all I have right there. I'm gonna probably post a link for the Ethiopia. Um, I think that's pretty much a good look for Ethiopia. I mean, right now they're being very self-aware and they're being very self-resistant in the foreign power from definitely when they close their uh, adoption. So, yeah, I'm going to definitely link it up and I'll hit you guys up with another, another video. All right.
one.